Welcome back to Master Glass. I am your host, Livio, and today we are gonna get acquainted with two liqueurs from the Friuli region of Italy. And with it, I'm gonna make two different cocktails. I can't wait to show you. Let's go. It is great to see you today here. Uh, I am going to talk about Nonino, which is an incredible distillery that is in the Friuli area of Italy. Where's Friuli? North East side. And um, this distillery here has been family owned for three generations. It's mostly female owned as well, owned and operated. If you go on their website, a lot of history, uh, a lot of beautiful things happen in this area. I'm gonna talk about their latest comer to the market, which is the Nonino Aperitivo. And then over here, the iconic, probably you're already familiar with, the Nonino Amaro Quintessenza. What is the difference between the two? Well, it's very technical. Technically, you drink this before the meal or you mix it in a cocktail before a meal and technically you drink this after your meal and or you mix it in a cocktail after the meal but that really doesn't uh, translate when you think about the opportunities of the cocktail here and how you could make light refreshing crisp drinks with either or and also something bold and boozy that you would drink after a meal with both anyway I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Nonino Aperitivo. Uh, aperitivo is basically which they also call a botanical drink. What they do is they take one of their special grape distillates called Ue, and in this case, the grape that they use is called the Fragolino grape. And in it, they will infuse uh, botanical herbs, roots, fruits to make this very cool beverage. As you can see, this is the only aperitivo that I know on the market that isn't that bright red color. It has this nice little golden hue to it. And uh, I also observed that in the glass. As a matter of fact, in the glass, uh, you can even see more of that gold color to it. It does have a slight cloudiness to it, which one would think is a symbol of non-clean and non-pure, but quite the opposite. It also means that it's as um, less tampered with as possible, and therefore there's no clarification. Oh. The aroma is really bright and lots of flowers, lots of fruit too, predominantly a bright orange bright candied orange, I should say, with a little bit of those almond notes to it. Now, just even though I haven't talked about this one yet, I do want to compare the aroma to see if there are any points of, of, of differentiation or not. Oh, okay, so yeah, totally different. Okay, great. So a couple of things on the good news. Number one, they didn't just use the same bottle. Thumbs up right? They gave this its own identity. Number two, they didn't necessarily just take the same botanicals that are in here and throw them in here and make a lighter version. These are definitely two completely different drinks and I'm really happy about that. Very light, very easy, uh, very thin and thin uh, I mean, the liquid texture is really thin, but the flavors are nice and rich. Uh, uh, um, it starts with that nice fruit sweetness, but then it kind of dips into a little bit of a more rooty uh, bitterness, but very, very elegant. By the way, I believe the percentage of alcohol on this is 21. Yes, it is. 21% alcohol by volume. Very light, uh, very fresh, very floral. I'm gonna set that over here. Definitely a cocktail application for this is something really light and easy going, something like a spritz or something where it's not in charge of necessarily giving you the big flavors. It's augmented or helped uh, by another liqueur or by a sweetener and we'll get to cocktails in a bit. Over here, uh, I have the Amaro Quintessenza. Uh, this here is actually made with three different grapes or the brandies. Brandy that is used for this product is made with three different grapes. And also another big point of differentiation here is that this product here, after the infusion is done, is aged for 12 months. And out comes this iconic uh, ingredient here. Yeah, and this one here, I'm getting a lot more of a briny, note to it. Yeah, maybe a little bit of cloves, 
some different type of different types of baking spices. In addition, in addition to that clove, I'm getting almost a little hint of rosemary or some sort of a piney uh, tile, type of a fresh herb. And a, just a hint of bitter bark aroma. The texture here is far more rich. And I'm getting more of a licorice, um, chocolate, orange, but a touch of orange. Not over here where orange was more dominant and floral was more dominant. Over here, chocolate and black licorice and a touch of orange and definitely more rich flavors. So absolutely they come through on what they promise to be. This one being something more light and refreshing before the meal. This one over here being a little bit more uh, bold for after the meal. Uh, what is the alcohol content of this guy here? 35%. So of course, more alcohol after the meal, less alcohol before the meal. Let's go ahead and make a couple of cocktails with these two. So I'm gonna set up my table here and I'm gonna make a couple of drinks. Now let's make a couple of cocktails. So with the aperitivo, I'm really intrigued in seeing how it's gonna go in just to a classic Venetian spritz style of a cocktail uh, because I love the fruit flavors and how those are really bursting with floral notes and things like that. So in the glass, I'm gonna go ahead and put three ounces, 90 milliliters of Prosecco. This here is Nino Franco. Prosecco Rustico, it's a really great uh, brand. Uh, now, I've always been adverse to pouring Prosecco or champagne over ice. I've been the first one that has cringed for many years. But as I learned that the bubbles really kind of push up aroma, I feel like it's a good idea to put the bubbles on the bottom and let the aroma of the next two ingredients kind of make their way up to your nose, which is gonna make the drink feel better. There we go. Actually, it's not gonna make the drink feel better, it's gonna make the drink drink better. So after those three ounces, I'm gonna go ahead and add two ounces or 60 milliliters of the Nonino Aperitivo. There we go. And then I'm gonna sandwich it in the bubbles. So I'm gonna to just top it with one ounce or 30 milliliters of soda water. I'm gonna set that here for now. Let's grab a nice little orange. Okay. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, you know how much I love the orange slice, far more than I love the peel, far more than I love the flamed peel, any of that stuff. Not a fan, I like this simple, especially when it comes to Italian drinks because Italian drinks are made simple. Uh, they are made often in coffee shops or sidewalk cafes where they don't have enough time uh, or the need to get all complicated. So I am gonna go ahead and just garnish this just like that, tucked right in between the ice and the glass. And this is gonna be our first one. Before I drink it, I'm gonna go ahead and make the second version and then I'm gonna drink them both together. To make this next one here, I'm going to, by the way, this I'm going to call the Spritz Biondo, meaning the blonde spritz. Okay, now I'm just going to chill this cocktail glass right here, set that over there. So for this cocktail here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a riff on a paper, off of a paper plane. The paper plane is a cocktail that was created by bartender mixologist Sam Ross, and it actually has Amaro Nonino in it. It has an imperativo in that case. It has Aperol and it has bourbon and lemon juice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an Italian version of it, and I'm gonna call it the Aviano. Aviano happens to be the first airport of Italy that is in Friuli, so right in the area where Nonino is made. And because it's also, I guess, the same terminology as the aviation, I'm gonna go ahead and make this drink with gin like an aviation would. So, I'm gonna go ahead and start with equal parts. And as you know, I go spirit first. One and a half ounces or 45 mils 
or Bombay Sapphire. I know you're jealous about my little bottle here. And next I'm going to do one and a half ounces or 45 mils of Nonino Amaro Quintessenza. Just like that. Equal part again, one and a half ounces. Give me a like for that. There we go, of the Amaro. And then last but not least, we're gonna put one and a half ounces also, so all four parts equal of lemon juice. Now I am going to double strain, which means I don't really need to filter this lemon juice. I'm going to filter it at the time of the strain. Okay. That is one and three quarters ounce. I'm gonna go ahead and dump that right in and give this a nice shake. Okay, I can hear the sizzle, which is the sign of a good shake. I'm gonna go ahead and empty my ice, or I should say my glass from the ice, and here we go. Okay, we're gonna set that here. Now I was gonna, I was kind of curious as to what color the drink was gonna come out, which is why I didn't pick my garnish ahead of time. Now that I know what it looks like, I feel like a nice orange peel will give a nice little contrast to this yellow a golden hue. There we go. Give, give this a little press just like that. Get those oils inside the drink and just float that right on top just like that. And there we have the second one, which is the Aviano, which takes me to my favorite part, which is when I get to try these. I'm excited to let you know that we have launched a spirits course on MasterYourGlass.com. While you're there, you can also find this t-shirt in the shop. You can find the Cocktail Clarity cocktail book. You can also find some free resources such as flashcards. Just go to MasterYourGlass.com and the course is already heavily discounted, but if you enter the code MYG Spirits, it'll get discounted even more. Let's get back to the video. So the first one, like I said, is called the Spritz Biondo, basically the blonde spritz. And let's just see how Nonino Aperitivo fits into a beautiful spritz. Light and refreshing. Uh, it allows the Prosecco to be a bigger part of the cocktail than if this were, say, made from uh, Aperol or one of the other red uh, aperitivi. In this case here, the Prosecco is really shining and the, um, the Nonino Aperitivo is basically just giving it a hint of really nice, delicate, fruity floral flavors. Definitely a lighter version of the spritz, uh, which might be really appealing, especially because those who drink a spritz like their drink to be a little bit on the lighter side. Yummy and delicious. Let's go over here to the Aviano. Again, this is kind of my creation, uh, riffing the paper plane. Mm. I would drink that. I would drink that very frequently. I would drink that very, very frequently. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, it's just that I'm not getting anything that's jumping, I am actually getting a really nice balanced cocktail that is throwing at me a little bit of floral, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of those botanical 
a zip of citrus, but there's nothing really that I can say, oh, I'm tasting a lot of this. No, I'm tasting a lot of balance. I'm gonna go for another sip here. Really, really good. Really, really good. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, give me a like. I hope I did explain properly the way you liked it, the difference between Nonino Aperitivo and Nonino Amaro. And if I didn't, drop a comment below and come back to Master Glass soon because I give you expert instruction for everyday consumption.